Testing one, two. Greetings and welcome to Let's Talk About Books, baby, where we talk with your favorite LGBTQ plus author. I'm Anita Kelly and my guests today, and I say guests, plural, um, are Tony Logan and M.A. Binfield. Hi, folks. Hey, Anita. Hi, Anita. How are you? Good. Good. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's the end of summer, you know. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Ready for those pumpkin lattes. Oh, my God. <laughs> and pumpkin bagels and pumpkin everything spice. Yeah. There you go. Um, not ready to let it go yet. Not ready to let it go. It's not been a good summer in England, so I'm hoping for a bit of light sunshine. Ah, yeah. Well, we're we're actually having a heat wave right here in the northeast of the U.S. Uh, and uh, it's supposed to last for a couple of days. So I am really pity those kids who have to go to school. Okay, mm-hmm. wait a second to find heat wave because I'm from Arizona. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You have a heat wave every day, Tony. You bet. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be in the 90s. So. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> You're like, oh, that would feel good. <laughs> so, all right. So thank you both for being on the show. Um, and uh, I love talking with both you um michelle and tony and uh, i want to talk about your book that you released this year in 2024 um and it is called the romance lovers book club is that correct that's correct all right so so tell us about this book um tell us you know who are the characters what are they doing uh you know what is the romance lovers book club all about well, um, so one of the main characters' name is Harper, and she loves romance novels. And so she created the Romance Lovers Book Club with her best friend, Alice. And so the book kind of starts at the end of one of their monthly meetings with their friends. And Alice hangs back when everybody leaves, and she's going to help Harper clean up because Harper was hosting And so as they're cleaning up and they're drinking wine and everything, they're kind of reminiscing about some of the books that they read and how wonderful these books are. The characters go on these adventures and they always end in love. And, oh, wouldn't it be nice if their life even slightly resembled some of these books? So Alice comes up with this idea and she's like, hey, we've got this vacation coming up this summer. Let's go to London because they had just read a book about an American that goes off to London bumps into a princess, falls in love, and they, you know, happily ever after. And she says, why don't we recreate that book? Like, we'll go off to London and everything that that character did in that novel, that's going to be our itinerary. We're going to go to all these really cool places. And wouldn't it be nice if we bump into a princess as well? And so at first, Harper was kind of a little cold with the idea. And then she warmed up because in college, she had a fling with Chelsea who was a British woman, and through the years, they've lost touch and stuff like that. So she thought, well, maybe this will give give her a chance to reconnect with Chelsea. So she sends Chelsea a text, a message, and says, you know, hey, I don't really know what's kind of up with you these days, but we're going to be in London. If you have an opportunity, it would be nice to, to see you again and catch up. And so Chelsea does reply, and she says, I'll do you one better why don't you guys stay with me and I'll kind of be your tour guide. I'll, I'll show you around. And so off they go to London. And uh, when Chelsea and Harper reconnect, they realize that the spark that they had in college was kind of still there. But then as the story progresses, they do bump into a princess, but she's not quite as she seems. And so as soon as she is incorporated into the story, Things start to happen and shenanigans begin. I love shenanigans. I wanted to say, if it wasn't obvious, the um, Romance Lovers Book Club involves a bit of wine. 
So I, f- I feel like <laughs> hatching a plan to, to go to London and try and meet a princess as a life choice is, is the thing that you do when you've had a couple of glasses of red wine and you're full of what, wine and romance, I think. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, that's um, the kind of book club that I would like to be a member of. I think reading romance novels and drinking red wine is so getting I, a bit messy. I have <laughs> to tell you that I used to be in a wine and book club. Um, ah. Yes. You and didn't do anything impulsive, no impulsive traveling across the world, Anita? No, you we up? didn't do that. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. But, you know, it could happen. So um, this this book sounds really intriguing. So so Harper and Alice are, are Americans. Um, yes. <laughs> and so they go over to London and they reconnect with Chelsea and mm-hmm. um, listeners, if you haven't ascertained this yet, um, Tony is from the States <laughs> and Michelle is from the UK. So I want to ask you guys, did did you, when you were writing this together, did one of you um, write the part of Chelsea and the other write the, the part of Harper because of like your backgrounds? I think we started off thinking that's what we do, sort of broadly speaking. Obviously, Harper is um, from Arizona, you know, so it's like places I've never been and and, um, a character that probably Tony could feel more affinity with. And Chelsea lives in London and my favourite football team is Chelsea. I named her Chelsea, Chelsea the football team. Ah, So I think it it was obvious that we had more affinity with those characters, but the actual act of writing the book made it impossible because when you write a chapter or a scene, they're both there, you know, um, and you're sort of, it, we couldn't stick to it as we wrote the book together. It was necessary okay. to sort of understand both characters, to be able to write both characters. So I would write things that Harper said and Tony would say, no American and would say that ever, so you need to change it. <laughs> and uh, Tony would sometimes have them doing things like sitting down in a London pub and expecting to get served, which wouldn't happen unless you went to the bar yourself. So we, we sort of had that experience of learning quite a bit about things as, as we went through it, through the mistakes that we made. But it was a lot of fun to do it that way with, with those yeah. two characters. In that oh, way. That's cool. really a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you yeah, learned sure. like the cultural nuances of each other's countries in writing this, <laughs> yeah. We did. So, we, we did. We laughed a lot. I mean, it was, um, and it still is when we talk to each other. There's times where I've got my phone right by the computer and I'm like, I have no idea what you just said. And, <laughs> and she'll say, oh, well, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm not quite sure how you say it. And so it's a guessing game. But yeah, well, we were writing the characters, like Michelle said, because we were writing um because I started with chapter one and she wrote chapter two and three. And so we would alternate the chapters. And so when we got to the point where um, Harper and Alice are actually in London, then we're actually writing chapters with both characters. So when I would write Chelsea's dialogue and then I would kick that chapter to Michelle, she would, like she said, she'd be like, yeah, no, this is not how we say it. And I have no clue about this catchphrase. So she would rewrite her character's dialogue and then when she would write the next chapter the same thing and i would get it and then i would, I would read harper's dialogue and and had to americanize that yeah. so but we did it i mean we went back and forth and back and forth the whole book yeah wow that yeah, is a lot of work sorry michelle mm-hmm. go ahead no i'm saying it was it was a lot of fun and it was it was kind of difficult too i mean you know you're you're writing um, I mean, I, I sort of felt like I knew Chelsea better than Harper, but by the end of the book, probably not. I, I sort of knew them equally. It's just the way it goes, isn't it? Um, and I think there's some of the weird things you wouldn't think about, like in a romance, there's often sex. Um, so we would write sort of sex scenes together. And that's kind of <laughs> not together, but like one would write a scene and then you'd have to send it to the other one. And so oh, I just wrote this. How is it? And that's not what you do as a romance author. Usually you write it yourself you don't have to check it with anybody um so that was kind of weird like an interesting experience for me yeah, anyway. yeah. i've not written with anyone before um yeah it so sounds yeah, kind of icky 
no, it was okay. It was kind of fun. We laughed a lot about it. You know, it's it's not heavy duty. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's um, it's sexy in parts, but it's it's not erotica. So there's there's, there's a bit of a sort of romantic sex in well, it, okay. but not a lot. Okay. But yeah, um, it's 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 a fun book. I think I think we really liked the extra characters too. They've got good chemistry, Harper and Chelsea. Um, and that sort of sizzles a bit, but there's Alice, her friend is, it was just like super, a lot of fun to write. Uh, yeah. and there's some villains in there as well. Some side characters that are just larger than life and quite fun too. So it's a book that's not heavy on the angst and it's like a, a sort of lighter romance. T- Tony writes those books really well. So I, I tend to, towards angst a bit more. So I think when we were writing this one together, I think it has more of Tony's influences in, in a really good way. Uh, and the concept was hers too. She's been very modest. It was her idea too. That's that's great. I like less angst. There's enough angst in my world. So. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the chemistry um, that you guys have in real life Right. Is like I've talked to you a couple of times and it's, you know, you can tell there's a chemistry between you. You work well together. So, you know, I can only imagine how that um, just kind of flows over into this book um, and your characters. Um, You must do that really well. Yeah, we had fun writing it because when we would brainstorm we would take maybe, I don't know, about 30 minutes and go, okay, we really need to talk about the book because we would just be jibber jabbering about life and what was going on. And then we would sit and we'd be really, really serious. And, you know, I would always have my notepad and and we would do all of our brainstorming and (laughs) we would always just go back to just, just chatting about life in general and everything. So I think that we really did. We brought our friendship into these characters. Oh, that's so nice. That's so great. So yeah, I, I can't imagine writing a book with someone you don't know or like. No, actually, I no, can't imagine no. that would be that would be difficult because it's technically quite difficult. So if you're not having fun and you can't be open about what works or doesn't work, or that you're stuck with something and, and or laugh about stuff, I think it would be quite difficult. I wouldn't want to write a book with someone I didn't know or like. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that would be. I don't. I don't think it would work at all. Really. Um, it wouldn't. It would come through in your writing, um, and you know, it, yeah, it just wouldn't be good work. Um, so uh, I'm glad that you guys have good chemistry. And I want to ask you, how did you meet, and how did you decide to collaborate across the pond? I saw Michelle. Michelle did a, a, a video interview. And in the interview, she was talking about that she was a new BSB author at that time and COVID hit Mm -hmm. and that she was not able to meet the other authors. And I was like, oh, my God, that's my story, too, because when my first book was published, same situation, COVID hit. And I was I was so excited after my first book, like, I'm going to do the circuit. I'm going to go to GCLS. I'm going to go to P-Town. I'm going to do all that. I'm going to meet everybody and nothing i mean you know everything was shut down and so i reached out to michelle and i said hey you know hi i'm a bsb newbie i just got a book published and i have read your work and i really 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 like it so it was just kind of a touch base with, with her and she replied back and so we started chatting and then when we got to the point where the emails were so long, she's like, why don't we start Zooming? <laughs> and so we started Zooming and just instantly, instantly fell into a really nice friendship. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. And and for our listeners, uh, when you say you're a BSB newbie, that means a Bold Strokes Books new author, correct? That's correct. Yes. All right. All right. And that's where our listeners can find your book, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. I, I'm just going to get down and dirty here. Um, are you guys, um, like, your chemistry is good. Are you in a relationship? Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble, Anita. I have a, you have I'm a very jealous. 
I have a very jealous partner. Yeah, you'll get Tony in trouble. Oh, okay. Um, there you go. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're like, I mean, we're, it's, yeah, good chemistry, but fr friendship chemistry. Okay. We have a really nice time, yeah, good friendship, but yeah, not, not, um, I mean, we've never been in the same room. It doesn't mean you can't have a relationship either, but we, our um, friendship has been conducted entirely on camera, which is often the way these days, isn't it, in a post-COVID world? But, yes, uh, yeah. keep saying to Tony, come come to England, come to Scotland, I could take you to that pub that we had in the book, the one that sells the chocolate stout, and I'll, I'll take yeah. you to that cafe, and we'll go and play in Princess Diana's Fountain, and <laughs> I think they go and visit Radcliffe Hall's grave yeah. in, in a yeah, cemetery somewhere do. so all the adventures so in, in a way without the, the standing up sex part we could probably recreate <laughs> 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 it have some really good adventures though some of them because there's a princess involved they're a bit on the pricey side i'm not sure i could take you for tea at the ritz tony it might, it might not be in my budget but <laughs> we could improvise if you if you manage to get to to England, I can't promise you'll meet a princess either. I don't oh, know any. Michelle. It's not common. Yeah. Well, Michelle, you I'll have to work on that. I'll do my best. Yeah, I'll do my very, very best. Yeah, yeah. and it's, no. it sounds like this book can almost be like a travel guide too, like to all these mm. cool places in in England and Scotland too. No, I, I think just Tony's got a love for Scotland and, oh, and a desire to visit. Yeah. All yeah, right. never been, but always wanted to. Awesome, awesome. Yep, it's a great, a great place. I've not been. Um, we uh, had planned to go actually next month, but uh, things changed in life this year. So, so uh, <laughs> you know, um, next maybe next year. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, since you guys had such a great collaboration um your first time around are you talking about like a second book is there going to be a sequel we I mean, we, le we left it kind of open at the end i think we were both really keen on alice and, and we sort of left yeah. a little door open for her for the future with half an eye on the fact that we might want to write a sequel one day i think we're both working on other projects so yeah. tony i mean you could talk about yours you've just sent a manuscript in and i'm halfway through one yeah. and then i think we both want to have a bit of a break um from it for a while because like um tony we've I think we were new authors in 2020 or whenever that was, but we've also produced a lot of books since then. So uh, speaking for myself, I'd quite like a break. So, uh, But it's not a no, it's a sort of maybe at some point, but not yet, I think. Is that yeah. fair, Tony? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. As, as it stands right now, the book is a standalone. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right. So maybe, you know, I, I like to hear mm -hmm. that the door isn't closed. Um, it's a jar. So. It's a jar. It's a good <laughs> say that. Yeah, it is. It is. We might. We might venture down that path later. But for right now, yeah, we we don't have any intention of making it a sequel. So, what else have you all been working on um, individually then? Since um, you know the Romance Lovers Book Club has been published. Um, I just finished up a book and turned it in called Hollywood Hearts, and that will be out February 2025. And so I'm waiting right now for the edits on that. Yeah, no, I'm, in, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of a, a book about a, a, a romance about a climber um, who, who's been injured, um, a mountain climber, and that's going to be due in July 2025. So yeah. I'm a bit not as far forward as... Um, Tony is with that manuscript, but yeah, working on that at the moment. Wow, those are great. I I, I like the storylines for both those. So, Hollywood Hearts, I'm assuming Hollywood Hearts is mm -hmm. about like Hollywood romance. It's about an A-list celebrity and a paparazzi, Ooh. and when they meet, they, the the celebrity does not know that the other woman is paparazzi, and not just paparazzi, the paparazzi that snapped the picture that ended up in tabloids that got her into a lot of trouble. So um, when she finds that out, of course, you know, things things kind of unravel. But in the end, yeah, they come together again. Yeah, that that's what makes a good romance. <laughs> the girl always gets the girl. You betcha. 
And um, the climber story, do you have a title for that yet? Or is that still in the works? It's called Give, Give Me Your Hand. Yeah. So oh. we have a sort of, um, yeah, we have the sort of title and the cover and everything's sort of been put to bed. Yeah. Just need to finish it. Wow. That sounds kind of therapeutic. Right. It's um yeah I, I guess yeah it's it's um it's not a light book in the sense that um, <laughs> yeah, without Tony's influence this is what happens to me I get all angsty. I was gonna say <laughs> so you're telling me there's angst in this book. <laughs> <laughs> he used to drag me into the light. Yeah, this is what happens. <laughs> when I'm left in the dark by myself. Ooh. It's about an in injured climber, yeah, who, who feels like her life has hit a bit of a wall and, and they send, um, it's kind of an interesting premise for me, they send a younger woman um, <clears throat> who to, to help ghostwrite her autobiography, which she really doesn't want to write because she's in like uh, a very bad mood and, and they have a lot of tension and she's a, a bit in english we'd say she's a bit of a cow in america mm -hmm. we'd probably say she's a bit of a bitch um so that it's a real sort of opposites attract sort of um yeah a lot of sparring to begin with and then a lot of chemistry and, uh, okay. i don't know what happens here because i haven't finished it but there'll be a happy ending i know that much uh, i'm yeah. gonna have to use that word you're a bit of a cow <laughs> uh, i don't know why we say that i don't know why we pick on cows but we do <laughs> now that sounds like a great book though um it sounds really interesting and um you guys have been busy uh mm. yeah too busy we both have really busy full-time jobs too okay. yeah, uh, we do. so how do you manage to to write work full-time um, and, and especially when you're collaborating, like, um, that must've been a little tough. It was cause there's also a time difference, you know, yeah. between us. right now it's eight hours. So I would get up early in the mornings. That's when I write the best. So before work really gets a hold of me because in the evenings I'm, I'm very, very tired. So I'll get up early discipline, you know, every morning, just get up and, and write, write so many words. And then when we were writing together, we our, our calls are like morning for me. So my morning calls would be her afternoon calls. So when she kind of finished her work was before I started my work. So, uh, and weekends, a lot of weekends. Yeah. 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 I'll bet. I'll bet your time's a little more Nothing free. Will. One good thing about writing with someone is it makes you write. So I've noticed in this um, manuscript I'm working on now that it's drifting a bit. And when I'm busy, I can't fit it in. But when we were writing together, I knew I owed Tony a chapter. I knew we were speaking <laughs> in you know, two weeks time to talk about, about that chapter. So it made me write. So, and I think Tony didn't mention it, but I, I was in a bit of a, like, I was a bit stuck when we were chatting and she suggested, why don't we write one together? Cause it's like a way of getting back into writing. It'll be more fun than you. It's quite daunting, isn't it? To start a new book and to, to do all that on your own when you're working hard and not feeling like you can do it or you're super motivated. So I think it was a really positive experience for me um, that Tony sort of encouraged me to do it. And then we kept each other to time in terms of the writing that we, we cracked through it because we knew we had to send stuff to each other so it's like um gives you a bit more discipline i think about the work yeah, yeah it does that's great yeah. that really is it's like you know someone's holding you accountable besides just your oh, publisher yeah. right <laughs> True. Yeah, they, they do do that too yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but that is um it, that is so true and and you're almost getting like immediate feedback right on your writing mm -hmm. yeah yeah that that's another great thing about it um so you can make some changes even before it goes to your editor right mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome. yeah, well, that was an interesting thing about it is the editor barely touched it when we sent it in yeah. i think we'd worked on it so well together and we'd improved each other's bits and maybe ironed out each other's flaws in terms of the way we wrote so when we sent it in I, I don't think I don't know between us if we've ever had such a light set of edits from, from our editor. It was it was hardly anything 
that, that was required of us. So I think that's a sign of how much we we did that improving that you're talking about, Anita, as we went, really. Um, so that was a positive thing, too, that we didn't get a big chunk of rewrites back um, yeah. at the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And do you... I heartily recommend it to anyone that's listening. Find a pal, find someone you get on well with, and write write a book with them. Yeah. Half the royalties. I do want to warn you though, you have to share the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of worth it. Though. And and how does that convert? Who actually gets more? If you're talking about what euros and dollars, does that make a difference? You get more, right, Michelle? Or does it? Are you guys? What what is it? Pound per dollar. A pound is worth uh, more than a dollar. Yeah, a pound is worth maybe one dollar twenty, one dollar twenty-five. I'm not sure exactly, um, but I think it depends on the sale okay. price, doesn't yeah. it? I think we just get a percentage of whatever the sale price is in our. Uh, in our I gotcha. Okay. So I think you get half the royalty percentage you would normally get. We get half each. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it evens out. It doesn't matter, does yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it should All do. Right. So, um, what was, I want to ask you both, what was the most difficult thing that you encountered um, about co authoring a book? Well, for me, and I'll, I'll stick to this book, is um, the fact that I've never been to London. 95% mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. book is set in London. So, I leaned heavily on Michelle, I'm like, look, you're gonna have to pick the setting, the cuisine, like what do they eat if they're at a certain restaurant? What is the, the vibe of the area? So I can kind of, you know, incorporate that into the description. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard, it's hard to write a book having never been to the setting of the book because I was on YouTube, I was on Google, Michelle was sending me pictures of parts of London, like the here, here, this is, what is it, shore ditch, ditch, here, shore ditch, this is what it looks like. And still, even with all of that, I, I you know, you don't have the smells, the sounds, the, mm -hmm. the real vibe of it. So that was really difficult. And then, of course, we've talked about the language, <laughs> the yeah. language yeah. at times was uh, was challenging. It really was. But we, you know, we, you know, step forward and step back. We were just back and forth with each other's writing. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, we, I think we, we seamlessly got it together pretty good. I mean, that's absolutely why I'm avoiding a sequel because they're flying back to Arizona and I couldn't possibly. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I do. <laughs> I don't want to give the work. Later. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to have to Google pictures of Arizona and do the work. <laughs> Tony was very diligent, actually. And, and I, don't, I think a lot of it you came up with, I think you did your own research. I think there was like a pub mm -hmm. scene where you yes. found some pub and described it so well for someone who'd never been in one of those, like, dark wood panelled pubs so I was always in awe of, of that actually yeah we did yeah we took them to Whitstable that was a bit cruel because that's a place that not, not even a lot of English people have been to um, I mean I did that I wrote not this time which was my second book I wrote about two members of a girl band that would have been in a girl band together and then reunited many years later and that was set entirely in Miami which is a place I've never been to. <laughs> so, <laughs> a real challenge. So I, I did a lot of research for that book, and and I I think it's true that if you've never been to a place, you you constantly feel like you just quite haven't captured it, you know, in in, in some way or other. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah, think like that. I've never, oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say I think that Tony used the word vibe, and you know, each each city, mm -hmm. each place, they have their own vibe, and. You know, that's a it's a feeling. So how do you convey that if you've not been there to feel that feeling? You know, um, mm -hmm. that, that's difficult. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I think the characters, you can put them anywhere, can't you? Two good characters with good chemistry and lots of the time they're together. And, and yes, their environment's important, but it's about it's about them, isn't it? And how they how you write them and how they connect. And I, and I think we nailed that in the book really well. The settings too, but I think the characters were, you could have probably put them anywhere and, and they would have been, you would have been interested in whether it worked out for them, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. So remember that when you write about Arizona. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, Tony told me the cactuses in her garden died, and I'm too scared to go there now. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm that person that says to Tony, it's really hot in, in my town right now, and it's like 82 degrees, and she scoffs at me. And when she tells me it's like what we would call 47, we can't even talk about temperatures together. Only America uses Fahrenheit in the whole world. The rest of the world uses Celsius. So we constantly are on our phones when we talk about the weather, which we do <laughs> because we're old ladies. We, we're always trying to translate the temperatures so we know what we're talking about. Yes. But I do know that Tony's cactus has died, and that was enough for yeah. me to know I never want to go there. Is that a, a, a swag? What is that? A swagaro? Sororo. Sororo. That's what I yeah. think of Arizona. That's what I think of. Soro cactus. <laughs> yes. You bet. And cocapellis. <laughs> yeah, cocapellis. Yep. Yeah. yeah, good for Yeah, Anita, there you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's actually cactus knowledge. <laughs> my my sister in law used to live there, so we used to go out there a bit. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so you know. Yeah. Stay away in the summer. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Her, I'm, uh, I'm going to call you Anita when I write that book in Arizona. Then. Okay. All, all, my, all my cactus. Okay. Anytime, cactus. Michelle. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I have your back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what was then the most satisfying aspect of co-authoring a book? Well, I think the most satisfying aspect of writing any book is just finishing it. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case like authors all have their own style their own voice you know kind of their way of of doing things and so i i really had to learn and, and we both kind of did this how do i take my style and my voice and mesh it with michelle's style mm -hmm. and michelle's voice like she's she, she said she likes angst i don't like angst and when you figure out how to create my art with her art and bring it together seamlessly, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's like a canvas. Like I'm basically doing one brush stroke and then she comes in and mm -hmm. does another brush stroke and you hope in the end that there's this nice, you know, picture. Yeah. And I think, I think we, we really kind of did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great analogy. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that being sort of friendly, you know, and, and and maybe a bit older, I don't know, but like we we took feedback really well. So I think where it didn't blend, like if I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit too angsty," I've got like, or, or, you know, you would say this needs a bit of angst, and I'm that's not natural for me. So I think we were like really open about where we needed a bit of help, or where we thought yeah. it wasn't quite working, and and helped each other out in in that regard as well, and that made it blend really well i think too yeah I, I think when i i've read it back recently and i don't think it feels like two people wrote it and, and i think that's a real um testament to how hard we worked on it so we started off with this idea of a chapter each i think if we'd stuck to that it would have felt like two people wrote it mm -hmm. and you would have been hopping out of one style into the other but when you read it now it doesn't feel like two people wrote it i don't think that's... and i think that was for me something that was really satisfying that we that we did blend it in that way to get a, a book out of it that that feels like it flows really well yeah, yeah that is amazing that is just i think a phenomenal task um i've read books that have been co-authored and where you know one person does one chapter and one person does another mm -hmm. chapter and you can definitely identify who did what chapter based on their individual books um but it, you know, it sounds like you guys really kind of melded together, and mm -hmm. that's nice. And we re we rewrote each other's work, which again takes yeah. some some um, confidence in each other. I think yeah. um, so. What we we edited, so we'd go back, and I'd say I've edited those past six chapters. So I was editing my stuff and Tony's, and then she was doing the same. So I think again, if it wasn't someone you knew well, or wasn't someone you were talking to a lot. I think that would be difficult to do. Yeah. Yeah. Neither one of us had any ego in this. We were, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's what I was just going to say, Tony. It sounds like you left your egos at the door. Um, we did. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's, that's not always an easy job. It's 
true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you think about it and you think, this is your work. This is your pride and joy. This is like almost a piece of you, you know, and someone saying, hey, you know, I don't, I don't get this. Uh, this, this doesn't, you know, really work here or mesh here, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, you can either kind of roll with that or, you know, get defensive, um, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's wonderful that you guys work so well together. I love it. I love it. And and it really, I think, reflects the, um, I'll say, peacefulness and calmness of the book, right? Um, mm-hmm. so, I yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So um, are you both, you're both working on um, some separate novels that are due out in 2025 um yes. and um what what else are you doing in life each of you in your respective countries mm, yeah i mean interestingly on, on saturday i'm quite excited i'm going to leicester pride so leicester is a place not far from where i live in, in england and they have a Pride Festival, it's this Saturday. So I'm going to be there with a few of the Bold Strokes books authors. We've got a stall there. And I haven't done that for a really long time for one reason and another. So I'm looking forward to spending a bit of time with them and maybe selling a few books. You never know. Leicester's one of those words that if you saw it on the page, it would look like Leicester. And Americans would always pronounce it wrong. It'd give us joy to laugh at them. But I'm no, telling you, it's <laughs> we say Leicester. Um, so I, so that, I have seen that and I have pronounced it Leicester. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like Worcestershire. Wuss, so yeah, I have so trouble with that one too. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Um, so yeah, so I haven't been doing a lot of book related things um, because I've just been working like an absolute, I don't know what works hard, a dog, a horse, a Trojan. Um, I work in in England um, in homelessness and, and rough sleeping in, in a sort of policy type role mm-hmm. and I've just I've got two jobs I don't know why I agreed to it but two part-time jobs and it's kind of killing me wow. Tony hears this from me a lot so I changed jobs about I don't know six months ago and it's been really challenging so I, I'm I haven't done a lot other than um, see family my partner and work yeah. and write I don't have lots of um, things that I've done besides that. And I'd really like to change that in the coming months, put the next book to bed and take a bit of a break and aim for a bit of a work life balance that yeah. doesn't involve me sitting in front of a computer screen all the time. That's important. You need that. Definitely. I know Tony feels the same because she works just as hard. When I said, I don't know if I should say I work like a dog, a horse or a Trojan, I should say I work like a Tony. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we do. We, we, we kind of like, compl- well, I don't know, complain, but we definitely talk about our jobs. Yeah. Consuming so much of our time. Mm-hmm. So what, what little we have. I mean, I've got a core group of friends here that um, we do like game night and we go to events and concerts and I also travel with some of them, but I haven't been doing that. I haven't been doing that much at all lately. So I need to, you know, when I do finally take a break from writing a little bit, I, I plan on getting, you know, just taking some trips. I did, I did go to GCLS once um, and then but not P-Town. I've always wanted to go to P-Town. I know, Anita, you've been to P-Town. Yeah, yeah. That is on my list. That's coming up um, that's coming in October. Up. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a fun time. Um, that's what we hear. Yeah. Yep. And, and you know, I feel like anything that's called Women's Week, you feel like that's going to be a fun time. Isn't oh, it? yeah. I can't think of a better week than a Women's Week. I Definitely. Think. I, I yeah. actually made the mistake of going to P-Town during Bear Week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah I, I think I would probably make sure it was Women's Week. Yep. Yeah. 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 If there's yeah. any other weeks. Yeah, you would go there for. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great time. I highly recommend it. So yeah, it's I've like never that. been to the I've never been to the east coast of America. Can you believe? Not Boston or New York or anywhere. Yeah, like but, that where people visit a lot. I've only ever been to the west coast. So. Yeah, yeah, and they're very different, right? Mm. 
So yes, Michelle, Michelle, I have to ask you, what is the um, it, it's a an accent, a British accent that um maybe is said. You hear it in the maybe the northern part of the UK. Uh-huh. What what is that called? Um, I mean, there's so, we we talk about this a lot. England is such a tiny country. You could probably slip it into a I don't know a corner of a corner of a corner of America, but we have so many regional accents and dialects. So my, my accent is from the middle of England, and it's very different from people in the north. In the north, there's probably four or five regional accents. So in the northeast, they talk very different to the northwest, even though it's a tiny, tiny country. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm not sure whereabouts in the north you, you mean. Yeah. Um, one, one interesting thing about English accents is in, in England, my accent is like one of the least sexy. So I don't know why. I don't know what the American equivalent of a not sexy American accent is. Um, but mine is definitely that in England. So if, if people in England hear someone from my area talk, they think we're a bit stupid. It gives that my impression. <laughs> so apparently my accent means that I'm very trusted by people. So a lot of financial advertisers use my kind of accent because they think people are too stupid to con you. But when you when you read <laughs> your book, when you read your book or do readings, I quite often <laughs> get Americans who tell me that my accent's quite sexy mm-hmm. because to them it's kind of English, just yes. English generically, and they like English accents. And it's always such a bonus. It's always so good for my self esteem because no one in England ever tells me my accent is sexy. <laughs> no, very occasionally, if I did a reading. Once and I, I, I got a, a direct message from someone. I won't tell you what they said, but um, yeah. it was a bit rude. But it it was implying that my accent was very sexy, so I I am um, I'm happy about that. Wow. Uh, but there are sexy accents in mine, yeah. And what would you call your accent? What what is it like? What do you call it's, it? In the UK? I'm from the Mid- Midlands, so um, yeah. I mean, the my accent would be called a Black Country accent. And the black has got nothing to do with, you know, people of colour. It's black as in it was a very industrial area with lots of soot and factories. So the black comes from the quality of the air. So it's called the black country. It's the heart of England where the industrial revolution happened and where there were lots of factories and engineering. So my accent technically is called a black country accent. Got it. Okay. That's interesting. I think it's sexy. I know. I know. I, 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 What's that? Go ahead. I didn't hear you, Tony. Sorry, say it again. Oh, I said I think your accent is sexy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't I, to repeat yeah. that. Now. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> yep, it definitely is. It, and I can't, I, I can't discern any difference really between, you know, British accents. Maybe if I live there. I mean, we, we can't, yeah. I, I can tell the difference between a deep southern accent or someone with a very strong Boston accent or like a New Yorker. You know, like we, yeah. we know some accents or like a valley girl or something, but broad, <laughs> like that whole chunk in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we call that. it too, that whole chunk <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost impossible to tell a Canadian from an American too. The, the only way we know Canadians is... is usually because they wear maple leaves on their backs so that people don't mistake <laughs> them for Americans when they're in Europe, um, which you should have a word with them about. I don't know why they do that. But, yeah. They, um, uh, Canadians will say a boat, a boat. Yeah, and that's pasta. true. Asta instead of pasta? Yes. Or, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've right. noticed that. We yeah. say pasta, yeah, well, they, they get that from us because they want to be that kind of English, more English-ish, I think. Red phone boxes too, so. Yep. Mm. Yes, you're right. Yeah. They're, they're wannabes. They are wannabes, yeah. They never really wanted to leave. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't celebrate their independence quite as heartily as you Americans. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, Americans are unique, that's for sure. <laughs> And and I'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that if we did write a sequel in Arizona, you could involve Meghan Markle, you know, Tony, if you wanted to meet a princess. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. And you've got one of your own over there. So. Yes, we do. All right. So I'm going to ask you uh, one last question. It might be a tough one, but um, 
what what is one thing that you learned about yourself through this whole collaboration through the whole process for myself i learned to um to give up control because going back to kind of what we said earlier when you write you're the director of your own play like every single thing that happens in that novel is because you made it happen you know no, no one says anything without you writing the dialogue no one moves no one does anything and you become you you become very like hyper focused on the the book on everything on the characters and it's you know it really is hard to kind of like give a part of your baby away if you will yeah. but in this process and Michelle and I realized this way at the beginning with our personalities you know we shed that at the beginning and when we were talking about writing together we actually said do you think we can do this do you do you think we can do this and and we both agreed yeah i mean what we were going to take to the table is a collaborative effort and so it it was wonderful i mean i really learned that that you can do that you can just take the control off of the table and be very fluid with the give and the go of what it takes to write a book like this with somebody it's a hard mm-hmm. lesson yeah. it's a hard lesson yeah, yeah it is yeah. i agree yeah. and i learned that i'm not as disciplined as tony <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I mean, genuinely, I'm I'm in awe of how hard she works, and still, it's like very structured about writing and, and gives time to it. And I'm I'm that person that needs a deadline to work. I'm, I sort of don't like the fact that I'm that person. So I think that I took from Tony um, just the importance of structure, carving out time, and it was really helpful for me to have her both her encouragement and the fact that I knew I owed her work. So <laughs> I, 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 need, um, I don't know what that says about me, but yeah, that, it's useful for me to have somebody cracking the whip. Yeah. You know, Metaphor. Yeah. Listen to yeah. Tony talk. It makes me sound like a slug. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see how I've struggled to keep the time in the book I'm writing by myself. So I should pay really Tony just to, I don't know, scold me every month. There you have go. You done that job? to yet yeah free money for you tony (laughs) demand a chapter from me every month and see if it gets more work yeah Mm. and also we've talked about it but it was important for me like i am an overthinker and i overwrite a bit and i'm a bit angsty and that that can come through in my writing so i've worked really hard on not overwriting and taking too many twists and turns with it and i think tony's um style is more (coughs) straightforward um I love all her books and um, I, I, I realise that I don't need to have to make it so complicated or to have so much angst that sometimes simpler things can be just as powerful. So I think that was a really good lesson for me as well. Absolutely. Wow. Those are like life lessons, you guys. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's great. Lovely. Um, so I think that is about all the time we have for today. Um and it has been great talking with you both um and again um i'm here with tony logan and m a binfield otherwise known as michelle binfield um and please check out their book that they co-wrote called the romance lovers book club which is available through bold strokes books um and it's available wherever you purchase your books um Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere. Um, And I think you will really enjoy it. And uh, I want to thank you both for being here with us today. Um, Thanks, Anita. Thanks for having us, Anita. It's been a blast. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, um, again, that's all the time we have for today. And I'm Anita Kelly. And thanks for joining Liz Talk About Books, baby. So, until next time, may your journey be lighthearted. Peace be plenty and be safe, folks.